David Diga Hernandez here, and you are watching an episode of ETV Interviews. And on this edition of ETV Interviews, I have with me my good friend. He's actually been on our YouTube channel before. His name is Michael Lombardo, and he is here to talk to us today about intimacy with God. But before we get into that, welcome to the broadcast, my friend. Thank you for good having me. Good to have you back. Oh, man. I believe my you pleasure. did Spirit Church with us last time. Yeah. And you, you taught, and so, but you're here today. You just released a book called Immersed in His Glory. We'll mm. talk more about the book later, but let's get into some of the content. Yeah. And I really do love the idea behind this book, breaking every barrier yeah. to experiencing God's presence. People are hungry for His presence, but they feel like they hit those those walls. Yeah, yeah. So I believe many can find you on one of our channels, and so let's just get yeah. right into the teaching. Talk to me about those barriers intimacy with God and focus in on what you think is the most common one? That's a really good question. And I think in this book, I touch on various, because it's, it's, it's multifaceted. All of our struggles aren't the same. You know, so I talk about, I hit it from a lot of different angles in my book, Immersed in His Glory. But for me, I think one of the greatest barriers has been self-condemnation and guilt, because when you get saved and now you're born again the spirit of god lives in the inside of you he takes out your all your old heart of stone and he gives you a heart of flesh you have a heart now that loves righteousness and hates wickedness so all you want to do is please the lord so i believe that pure-hearted believers the propensity that we need to learn to overcome is self-condemnation and the reason why i call it self-condemnation is it's because it doesn't come from god it comes from us what does that look like self-condemnation when someone's trying to pray how do they know what self-condemnation is describe it well you feel like you're not worthy to come into the presence of the lord you feel like you're dirty you're always thinking about your sins you're very sin conscious sin focused if condemnation is declaring somebody guilty for something and then you know um, punishment comes after that. Self-condemnation is saying, I'm guilty and I deserve to be punished or I'm unworthy and I can't come into the presence of holiness. I can't come into the presence of God. Really, self-condemnation is a fruit of a lack of revelation of the gospel, what Christ accomplished and his love and his heart for us as believers. But as pure-hearted believers, this is some, something that we stumble upon. And I believe that it's one of the greatest killers of intimacy, divine union in the body of Christ. You know, the, the devil, he wants us to have condemnation. He wants us to be bogged down because, listen, if, let's say I thought that you were angry with me, disappointed, you know, not, not pleased with me for something, I wouldn't be able to approach you confidently. I wouldn't just say, hey, David, how you doing? Shake your hand, give you a hug. I wouldn't be able to do that because I feel like he's upset with me. He's, he's, he's displeased in some way. But the Bible says that we could come boldly before the throne of God, that we have bold access to God through Christ and what he did for us. So when I know that God loves me and nothing I could ever do will ever change that, when I know what he did for me, that he shed his blood for me to make me clean, that now I, he, he became my sin so that I could be the righteousness of God in Christ. When we, when we learn these truths, we get a revelation of these things, then we can come to God for the forgiveness we need, for the, for the embrace, for the comfort, for the joy, for whatever we need, we can come boldly before him. I love what you said that self-condemnation is the fruit of a lack of a revelation. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about that revelation and how it broke self-condemnation in your life because I know this was an area where God gave you breakthrough. Yeah. So for me, I was born again. I encountered the presence of the Lord. I shared that in, in the last show I was on with you. And I just I was so hungry for God. And I would devour books and materials about walking in the power of God and going deeper with the Lord and fasting and prayer. And I dedicated myself to these things. And it's important to have a prayer life, fasting, tongues, uh, evangelism, intercession. All these things are important. And I dedicated myself to these things. But at the same time, I had a performance orientation. I felt like as I was doing these things, I was earning God's love for me. Or I was, I was constantly striving to, to, to turn God's heart towards me or to make him happy in some way. I believed that God loved me, but I didn't believe he liked me. Mm. And I was so focused on what I can do for God, my hunger for him, my pursuit of him. And I was like a roller coaster. If I was getting up in the morning, I was praying. If I was doing all my spiritual disciplines, then, you know, I was up here. I was encountering God. I was happy. I was in peace. But if I didn't wake up or I didn't evangelize at Walmart like I thought I should have, if I didn't meet this high standard that I placed over my life, then I was beating myself up constantly. And I was just up and down, up and down. 
And the Lord began to give me this revelation of his love. It says in 2 Corinthians 13, 14, May the grace of Christ, may the love of God, and may the fellowship of the Spirit be with you all. And these three revelations changed my life. The unconditional love of God, the grace that was poured out through Jesus Christ, and this intimate fellowship that is possible with the Holy Spirit. And so... Man, I would mess up. I would, you know, be, be angry with somebody or I wouldn't get up at the, you know, pray as long as I should have. And the Holy Spirit would just keep whispering to me, I love you. I'm pleased with you. I'd begin to actually read through the Song of Songs and the Gospel of John and 1 John. It would just come wildly alive to me. I began to get a re revelation of not only my passion for him, that I should be passionate for him, but his passion for me. Wow that he's hungry for my attention, that on that cross when he said, I thirst, he wasn't just talking about a natural drink. He was thirsting for sons and daughters. He was thirsting for us to come before him and to have fellowship with him. That's what he paid for. He paid for sons and daughters. He paid for us to have the same access that Jesus has to his throne. That's what he paid for. That access Jesus has, we now have because of the finished work. So I began to see his passion for me, his hunger for me, his seeking of me. And when I began to step into that revelation, it changed my life forever. I began to realize that he tore the veil from top to bottom. He tore the veil. Everything that separated me from my heavenly father, Jesus, in his body, in his finished work, he brought me near. I was once far off and he brought me near through his finished work. It changed my life. What was your prayer life like before you learned that? Some days it was real dry. Some days it was, I felt like God was light years away. And there were some times I was encountering the Lord. I was having visions. I was dreaming dreams. Still in that time frame, I was encountering the Lord. I was feeling his nearness. I was feeling but his presence. But it was presence. off and on, you're saying? It was off and on. There were some days I was confident in my relationship with him. And there was other days I wasn't confident because I wasn't measuring up to the self-inflicted standard that I put on myself. And sometimes it would take hours to get into this place of real vibrancy in my, in my prayer life and my devotional time. But when I began to realize this, that it's not works that, that, that bring me into the presence of the Lord. All those things are great. Fasting, all that stuff is great when there's faith attached to it, when faith is the heart behind the fasting, behind the intercession, behind the prayer. I began to realize that faith is my access. So now I just wake up and say, Jesus, there he is. I love you, Lord. Thank you that you're here. Thank you that you live on the inside of me. Thank you that you love me and you never stop loving me. It's my heart trusting and believing in what he, what he did, his word. My heart is now anchored in the word of God and what he did for me. And then there's a beautiful manifestation of the presence of God. So some may say, I hear you. I get what you're saying. Hmm. That revelation I, they may even they may even have possibly heard those things you're talking about, those truths about mm. the grace of Jesus, the love of the Father, the fellowship of the Spirit, but they yeah. can't make that connection. Yeah. They can't get from what they're feeling to experiencing what you're experiencing. Help them make that connection. We get so focused on our feelings. Am I feeling the presence of God? Am I not feeling the presence of God? We become so feelings oriented and experience oriented and experience driven. The Word of God needs to be the foundation of everything. We need to trust the Word of God more than our feelings and more than our experiences. You, you need to, what we need to do is we need to have this foundation of the Word. Like it says in Romans 10, 17, it says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. And I wake up every morning, I just declare the Word of God over my heart. And as I'm speaking the Word, I'm hearing the Word come out of my mouth. And it's actually building faith on the inside of me. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. He loves me. I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm his son in whom he's well pleased. And as I'm speaking this over myself, faith is growing on the inside of me and faith connects me to the manifestation of God's presence. So, you know, people, you know, they, 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 they try the word of God for a day, you know, they speak the word of God and then they get discouraged, they get disappointed. We need to trust the word of God, remain in the word of God, speak the word of God, devour the word of God. And as our heart is anchored in the truth, you will begin to um, experience a manifestation. But faith comes before the manifestation and faith comes before the feelings every single time. And I wish I can give a five step. This is exactly, this is going to work for everybody. Formulas. And so many people try to pump out formulas, try to tell you just do this and just do that. But the gospel is all about this amazing God who poured out his love, who, who is more accessible than, than, than we could ever imagine. He's not far away. He's not withholding himself. It's just this beautiful God that we have now access to through faith. It's so simple. It's so simple and so beautiful. I love what you're talking about here, faith and confidence. 
versus cowering and yeah. second guessing. Talk yeah. to me about that confidence. He said that we could have confidence. Man, he's a holy God, but he has also made us holy by his blood. He's a God who, who removed all of our sin. He doesn't count our sins against us. We can be confident to enter into his presence. And the beautiful thing is, you know, the Holy Spirit, something amazing about the Holy Spirit is he comes and he heals our hearts. This is something I really would love to touch on. He comes and he heals our hearts. So many, we have a skewed vision of who Father God is because of our dad, maybe the absence of our dad, maybe the, the, the abuse of our father or mother. But the Holy Spirit comes and he shows us who the Father is. And when he shows us who the Father is, he's a good Papa, that he loves us, that he adores us, that he's smiling over us. When the Holy Spirit reveals the Father, our hearts are healed. It's amazing when the Holy Spirit reveals the truth of God to our hearts, he actually pulls up the lies that we've believed and these lies hold us back from entering into the presence of God and being bold before God like we should. For me, it was also shame. I had a deep sense of shame because I came from drugs, I came from perversion, I came from doubt and unbelief. And so the Holy Spirit had to do some serious work on my heart. He is the master at working on our hearts. He's so beautiful. And for me, I actually was in a relationship where I got a girl pregnant before I encountered Christ, before I got saved. And I, I wasn't born again. I didn't have the mind of Christ. And the girl, she, she, she wanted to have an abortion. And I said, you know, I, I had the money at the time. And I said, okay, I paid for the abortion. I get saved, you know, months later, maybe six to nine months later, I get saved. And now Jesus is in my life. I'm encountering him, but I still, I'm not a fan of church yet. <laughs> I'm not a fan of church. My sister, she calls me up and she says, just come to church, come to church. So I said, you know what, God, I love you. I'm not really big on church, but I'll go today. But please just remove one burden, just one burden from my back. Just speak to me, Father. And I get to church and nothing happens in the church service. Nothing at all happens. And I'm like, thanks, God. And so I go to the restroom, the pastor's doing an altar call. And because it was a mega church, I heard in the speakers, the pastor was, you know, he was giving words of knowledge and all this stuff. And I heard him say, there's somebody here that had an abortion and the Lord wants to heal you from shame. And wow. I knew it was me. So I ran out of the bathroom and I tried to get into the doors, but there were 16 doors. It was a mega church and all of them were locked except the middle ones. I had no clue. So I ran back to the bathroom and I got into a stall. Man, God will meet you in unusual places, David. I got in that stall and I just opened my heart to the Lord and I just felt his forgiveness, his acceptance pour into me, his love. I was a murderer. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Abortion is murder. But he loved on me and he forgave me and he accepted me. Months later, months later, it was Father's Day and the, and the pastor, I was at church and the pastor says, all the fathers stand up. Everyone's clapping for the fathers. And I didn't stand up. I'm not a dad yet, right? I didn't meet my wife yet, no kids. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. And man, I just began to weep like a baby. But that's what the Holy Spirit does. He knows the shame that we hold on to. He knows the self-condemnation that we're always inflicting upon ourselves. He knows the hurts that we have. He knows the deception that's crept into our lives. He knows the lack of revelation that we have about the gospel. We've been taught legalistic things, formulas and, and methods that are anti-gospel, anti-Christ. He knows these things. What the Holy Spirit does, he comes in and he pulls up the weeds, the, the lies in our heart, and he implants truth. And when he puts that truth in us, he heals us. He heals us and we get to come before God confidently because now we have a whole heart. It's a wonderful ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's not just the healer of our physical body, but he's the healer of our heart. He's the one that renews our mind and shows us who God is, shows us who Jesus is. It's amazing. So how does somebody position themselves to allow the Holy Spirit to do that work? I think simply, you just ask him. You just ask him. With sincerity, it says, draw near and with full assurance of faith and sincerity of heart, it says in Hebrews 10. So it's just saying, Holy Spirit, I know that there's hurts in me. I know that there's things that I'm, that I'm believing that are lies. I know that I'm, I'm a work in progress, but come. Nothing is off limits. Nothing is off limits. Touch what you need to touch. Speak into what you need to speak into, whether it's encouraging, whether it's corrective. Holy Spirit, have your way. I yield my heart to you. I yield my life to you. 
he's your best friend and he's your truth telling best friend. He's gonna tell you how it is. He's gonna encourage you. He's gonna come for you. He's gonna teach you. He's gonna be all that to you, but he wants an invitation. Come Holy Spirit and minister to my heart. Show me this truth. And it's amazing when you ask him and you give him that accessibility to your heart, he's gonna come and he's gonna reveal to you, maybe you need a revelation of God as your Papa. Maybe you need a revelation of the finished work of Christ to, to set you free from self-condemnation and striving. Maybe you've had trauma from your childhood, you know, um, abuse or, or neglect, whatever it may be. He's going to come and he's going to heal your heart because if you can get to your heart, oh man, nothing will be able to stop you from jumping into your papa's arms. Nothing is going to stop you from laying down your life to bring the gospel uh, wherever he calls you to bring it. You know, this self-condemnation, this guilt, this shame. Mm -hmm. It's one of the barriers, as you talk about in your book, it's one of the yeah. barriers to intimacy with God. Yeah. Would you look into the camera yeah. and minister to that one watching yeah. who's battling heavily self-condemnation and guilt and shame, and because of it, they're having trouble connecting with the Lord in prayer. Would you minister? I want to say something to you that the Lord said to me. He said, stop beating yourself up. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, he's like, he said, take the boxing gloves off. I'm like, what do you mean? And he said, stop beating yourself up. The more you beat yourself up, the more bruised you become. The more bruised you are, the weaker you are. The weaker you are, the more you, you're susceptible to fall into sin or to go to other things that are trying to allure and trying to tempt you. If we're not receiving our comfort from the Holy Spirit, we're going to go to the false pleasures of sin, the false comforts of sin, especially those things that are most familiar to us. If you can't come to the Holy Spirit confidently, you're going to go to other things. So I say that to you, take the boxing gloves off. Stop beating yourself up. He's your papa, he's your comforter. He's the lover of your soul. He's your redeemer, your healer in every way. And I just wanna pray over you right now. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would manifest your beautiful presence. I just sense right now he's breaking off self-condemnation. I literally see chains in the spirit. I see chains falling off of you right now. And it's like they were invisible chains. They were, they were never real from God's perspective, but you put these chains on yourself. I see the chains falling off. And if that's you, just raise your hand in freedom. It's, it's, it's an act of faith. You raise your hand and just say, I will not be bound anymore. I will not suffer with self-condemnation. I will not suffer with guilt and shame. And maybe you had an abortion. Maybe you had a miscarriage. Maybe you did something that caused some kind of damage physically to yourself or somebody else. The Lord does not want you suffering with shame. He died for you to live a shame-free life. He died for you to be confident and bold before Him and for you to walk in wholeness and health and freedom. So in the mighty name of Jesus, I just thank you, Holy Spirit, for healing the deepest parts of their heart you are the gardener of our soul. Pull up the weeds, pull up the lies, the deception. Cast out the foxes that try to that try to steal our fruitfulness and just plant kingdom truth in their hearts right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I just welcome you, Holy Spirit. We just thank you for your ministry. Consume them, immerse them in your beautiful glory, your personality, who you are, the, the multifaceted God. Reveal yourself to them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for sharing what you shared. I really do believe that it was timely. And I think that there are some watching right now who this message has come just in time for them. Yeah. But you know, you talked about guilt and shame, but that's not the only barrier no. to experiencing God's presence. Mm -hmm. Just uh, just for a few seconds or so, could you just tell me some of the barriers that you talk about in this book? that yeah. keep people from experiencing God's presence? Yeah. So I talk about spiritual hunger in the book and the necessity of spiritual hunger. It's, it's a, that, that chapter really changed my life. And what are the barriers? Yeah, yeah, the barriers. Okay, I talk about self-condemnation, obviously. I talk about guilt and shame and all of that. I talk about inner healing in the book. I talk about doubt and unbelief. I talk about fear. Um, it's, it's, amazing. it's like the book really could be several books in one because there's all these different facets to it. In each chapter, I just... I dive deeply into it, give tons of scripture, tons of practical tools for them to overcome the barriers that I speak about in the book.
And so how do we how do we find this book online? Is there a website your ministry has? Yeah, they can go to www.lifepouredout, I-N-T-L, short for international, dot org. They can go to Amazon, they can get it on Kindle. Anywhere books are sold, they can get it, even in other countries. And if they want more information on your ministry, they go to the same website you just mentioned. They go to the same website. And so people can ask you to minister in their churches there. Mm-hmm. And as I say with the guests that we bring, look, I don't just bring you guests sporadically. And the people I bring to you because I believe in their ministry. I know Michael has a love for the Holy Spirit, so there are many facets of his ministry that I appreciate. So I just want to say, go and support his ministry. Get behind him. Check out what he's doing. Take a look at this book. Be sure to pick up your copy of Immersed in His Glory. Well, thank you so much for joining, my friend. I appreciate you and your ministry. Well, that is it for this edition of ETV Interviews. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.